Now, I would argue that in many ways we could think of James' pragmatism as the American version of Nietzsche's perspectivalism or perspectivism. And indeed, there are a lot of similarities between the thought of James and Nietzsche. Uh, they had similar influences, interests, and even views about philosophy, truth, and being, or metaphysics. Uh, both were great fans of Ralph Waldo Emerson. Both were profoundly affected by the Darwinian moment and Darwinian revolution in scientific thought. Both were attracted and schooled in uh, idealism and romanticism. And perhaps most interestingly, neither had a technical philosophic training. As you'll remember, uh, Nietzsche was a philologist trained in classical languages. Uh, James was a Harvard-educated doctor and one of the founders of modern um, psychology, who then later on took up an interest in philosophic speculation. As regards their interests, both looked at philosophy from an intensely psychological perspective. Uh, in particular, uh, religious psychology fascinated both figures. Uh, James, in fact, wrote two important books which dealt with those issues, one generally in the principles of psychology, and the second in his famous Varieties of Religious Experience. There is, however, some difference between them. Uh, Nietzsche was what we might call a philosophical psychologist, which is to say Nietzsche was interested in the philosophical implications to be derived from particular psychological states. James, by contrast, was a psychological philosopher. He was interested in the psychological implications of various philosophical positions. Um, but again, as I've mentioned, there are some commonalities between their views, and maybe that's a good way of getting some rough handle on what pragmatism is about. Both are pers uh, perspectivalists, which is to say, both are anti-realists, both in their interpretation of the external world as well as uh, the internal world. Both see reality as essentially unfinished and in some sense chaotic. And both perceive truth not as a copy of reality, but as a tool that a particular species uses to grapple with natural problems. And again, uh, and perhaps most importantly, both see metaphysics not as a doctrine about the nature of reality, but really ultimately as a sort of spiritual consolation and projection of a lonely animal in an isolated universe. The difference lies in the way both spin their perspectivalism, which is to say, Nietzsche sees the lack of absolute truth as opening up the possibility, at least in his case, of an almost morbid f fascination with cruelty, elitism, and a snobbish contempt for the herd. James, by contrast, sees the exact same state of affairs, the lack of absolute truth, and instead sees that as a sort of philosophic charter to embrace tolerance, openness, and democratic egalitarianism. And we can even see this difference reflected in the idiom they'll use to describe uh, the insights of perspectivism or pragmatism. Nietzsche refers to truth as following the power principle. Right? Uh, sentences are true if they, give us, if they help us fulfill our will to power. James, the American and perhaps the celebrator of American economic life, says a true sentence has cash value. It helps us get a purchase on reality. Uh, Nietzsche looks uh, for truth as a way of al allowing us to achieve domination rather than purchase. For Nietzsche, truth, since it's not absolute, is a lie or a great uh, useful error. James also acknowledges the truth is not absolute, but instead says that it is nonetheless serviceable or helpful. And one might indeed think of this as uh, two philosophers looking at the same uh, philosophic situation, and one seeing the glass is half empty and the other is half full. So what I would urge then is from an American perspective, we think of James' pragmatism as a sort of Americanized and I would urge in some way adult form of Nietzsche's adolescent insight into perspectivalism. But briefly, uh, in, by the time we've come to James, we are no longer scandalized by the loss of absolute truth or a God's eye point of view. Uh, which does not mean, however, that we must turn to ruthless recklessness, but just the opposite, to an even more careful and cautious calculation.